Hello world. Today I am sitting in a new location. Um, I am currently amongst the Germans as I was visiting family during the start of this whole outbreak of COVID. I'm not going to give that any more airtime on this channel. But today's video features my personal hairstylist who's going to be answering some questions I gave her and just providing some further context to how to take care of your hair when you want it to grow out. Uh, this video is specifically geared towards male to female individuals, but the content is applicable to anyone that's trying to grow out their hair. I thought it'd be only fitting if I show you guys my natural hair in its natural state. This is prior to any straightening. Now it is a little bit straighter than it would be, let's say, like see how this is coiling here. Normally that will happen over here as well and sometimes even more so right in here. Today's video is actually really special because I have my personal hairstylist giving you guys some answers to some of the questions that I have about growing out your hair. A lot of these pieces of information aren't provided to little boys growing up. Keep in mind, she is not transgender, but she is an LGBTQIA plus uh, supporting ally. And she has been amazing to me and to my hair journey. Grow longer because the length is too heavy for it and it starts to break. And I wear clip and extensions all the time. I'm actually gonna make a new video on wearing clip and extensions for next week. So keep an eye out for that video. But until then, I hope you guys enjoy this video. Please be nice. This is her first time on camera. Uh, she did an amazing job answering these questions. I do have a few things I want to say, but I'll save those for after you hear her responses. I'd say you are growing your hair out from a buzz cut the first few weeks. That's when it would look about time to get it cut again with clippers. So after that next four weeks or so, that's when it starts to lose its shape from being cut from the clippers. So key to kind of get through that first short stage around your ears would be a little movable gel over the ears. That'll help with keeping the sides slick and comfortableness of growing it out. Going from a short clipper cut into a pixie can seem like it would take a long time. Where it's going to take the longest is in the front bang area. If you notice, pixie cuts have this long triangular shape in the bangs and that helps the angles of the face look very feminine. So growing out the bang is gonna be the most awkward stage. Uh, I can feel like it can take forever, but it will not take forever. Um, things to do in the meantime be to exfoliate your scalp. You can do that with product that has an exfoliant in it, like a physical scrub. Amika has a good exfoliating scrub that's specifically to help your scalp be stimulated and promote growth before your shampoo. It's good to brush your hair, get one more exfoliate in before you shampoo. Going in with the fingernails, helping stimulate while your hair is growing out. So I hear a lot of questions about taking vitamins and biotin will help with your hair only if you have a biotin deficiency something that has been recommended to me to promote growth is silica comes in my magnesium pills it's already added in there with your long growth of hair everything that's longer pretty much it's about this long needs to be trimmed up occasionally especially if you're trying to grow it out so even if you are growing and it feels like you've made it to a good landmark if you're going for growth four to six weeks you can afford to trim trimming helps with the ends not breaking more if you're blonde or if you live in a dry environment your hair is going to be dry and it's going to split. I think even as short as a pixie, it is a possibility to consider clip-in extensions. You can go with just a few. When, you're, when you are short, you could have just a few to help framing the face to help finish your, your long angular look. I would recommend permanent extensions when it's a good maintenance plan for you. All extensions are going to weigh down on your hair. Even clips, which seem like the least maintenance option. If you're not rotating them from different spots, that can cause bald spots. Make sure that the clip and extensions are not being pulled on. Tape and extensions are hard on your hair too. They definitely will work, but you need to take care of them and you need to get them moved up frequently so that they're not pulling and damaging your hair. 
there. Keratin extensions I feel like are the least maintenance. They take the longest to put in and they're probably the most expensive but they have a really natural look. I do think that extensions can be used as a tool though to help with growth because when you are able to clip in a few pieces and leave some heat off of your hair that's going to give it a chance to grow and give it a chance to to heal. Parting your hair. Middle part can help hide receding lines and then also switching your part can help with volume so if you wear it this way for a few weeks flip it going the other direction those hairs will be standing in a different way why the salon is better than box color box color you picking out a picture on the box isn't necessarily what your hair is going to look like possibility that it can turn weird colors for example when you're putting on red box dye you can have first few inches of growth be like a nice bright red and then this can just be like a tinted red brown which is not cute and then in a few weeks it won't look cute anyway so formula wise it's probably not what you need and then if you were to ever get it removed it would be very expensive box color does not come out of the hair easy since it is very inexpensive it's filled with lots of waxings and metallics that when it's time to take those out of the hair it can leave the hair feeling stripped of all its natural healthy coating it can also melt the hair it can steam and just <laughs> and even if you think you're gonna be brunette forever someday you will get gray hair and box dye black over gray is not fun to fix so go to the salon get someone who's getting a good value and a good deal for you even like a like a chain place is going to be using good product and that's going to be better than using something you just got at sally's or some l'oreal kit um if you don't feel comfortable going to a salon maybe finding a stylist who does home visits is is probably going to be expensive but i don't know maybe connecting with the stylist online first would make it more comfortable then maybe a salon suite would be better because good hours it might just be just a few people in the salon that might make it be a little more comfortable how often should you shampoo your scalp has sebaceous glands that produce oil when your scalp is dry it produces oil when you are shampooing too much your scalp is dry and your your scalp is telling it to produce more oil where i do get gracie would be all on my scalp through the part bang area mid shafts and ends will be clean when i just shampoo my scalp conditioner should only go on what you can pick up and lift off of your head this can all be conditioned you don't want to put conditioner right on your scalp because that's going to make it greasy and then you're going to need to wash it again very soon blonde hair is a little high maintenance in the salon because it's a little more expensive and it takes a little bit longer and then it's also a little more maintenance at home it's going to be a little more dry so you need to get more moisture purple shampoo if you've heard of it before and you don't know much about it purple shampoo does a little bit of work of toning at home i use a very dark almost blue shampoo and i use it about once a month purple shampoos are naturally kind of drying so it's not good to use them all the time even if you like the nice fresh purple tone be nice to it use heat protectant use good product have a good hairstylist that you trust you are beautiful your hair is beautiful when you're looking at pictures of other people's hair don't compare now that she's responded to all those questions i actually have them pulled up on my phone right here and i'm going to quickly run through them and see if there's any additional information i'd like to provide let's say you're growing out your hair from a buzz cut how do you get through the awkward length above the shoulders so she had the suggestion of slicking the hair back. Now, I know for a lot of us in the trans community, um, slicking your hair back can be a very masculine feeling. So if, if it doesn't bother you to have it over your ears, leave it. But if you're transitioning slowly and still be, are being identified as male, maybe consider using that slick back option as a way to just get through it for the meantime. But... I think growing your hair out into a pixie cut is definitely a great first step. I took the personal approach of just letting it grow and grow and grow. I didn't cut it, I didn't do anything, but I think that my hair didn't grow as fast as it possibly could because I did not cut it. Now, she did say it takes about eight weeks for you to get to a spot where it's really necessary to cut your hair. So maybe try that eight weeks and then going into a salon. I definitely think that another way to accommodate having to go through those awkward stages is utilizing clip-in extensions or a wig. 
when your hair is short, clip-in extensions will have something to still grab onto, but you'll be able to see like a stair step, like a ledge almost, where your natural hair stops and the extensions start. So maybe consider using a fedora or a beanie or even just like a baseball cap, depending on your style, to help conceal and or using that same technique for a wig. Not all wigs are the nicest. Remember, a little bit more money can go a long way, especially with something like a wig. Even synthetic wigs can be really nice. The next question is, at what length is it appropriate to consider clip-in extensions? I definitely did clip-in extensions a little too early, but I made them work. I think that if your hair on the top is reaching about the end of your earlobe, um, at least that hair, then you're in a good spot to do clip-in extensions with no worry. Would you recommend any permanent extensions? I personally have had tape and extensions before and they irritated my scalp. Um, I had a lot of hair breakage. I got so many new baby hairs all over my head from that experience and I loved how they looked but it was uncomfortable to sleep on them. It was uncomfortable to wash my hair. I felt grimy. I have calyx all over my head so my when I wouldn't wash my hair for a few days the calic will open and when it splits you would therefore see any of the extensions that were installed in the area. I definitely think that you should discuss the options of permanent extensions with your personal hairstylist and figure out what's best for your hair type. Any recommendations on how to feminize the face? I definitely think parting my hair down the middle really feminized my face. I am going to reveal my forehead now. So my head, my forehead you can see is very squared off at that top point. It's something that I associate personally with a very masculine face shape. So just taking the hair and allowing it to, to fill in either side of this hairline. It's not a receding hairline, it is just my natural hairline, but the same thing could apply to a receding hairline. Parting down the middle or off center just a little bit is a great way to feminize the face. But also, if you like to wear your hair up or you go to the gym and you want to continue to feminize that face, I will leave out strands like this and pin up my hair in either a like clip or just in a simple ponytail. What if I'm not comfortable going to the salon? Alice, you answered these perfectly. I definitely recommend making friends with a stylist and seeing if they're willing to do custom home visits and or have flexible hours and do something maybe even after hours. My previous hairstylist worked out of a salon where he rented a booth and he'd work um, on the weekends and on days that the salon necessarily wasn't opened, which allowed me to get in even though he had a busy schedule and it also um, enabled me to be in a very non-judgmental space with normally only one or two people in the salon at a time. How often should I wash my hair? I don't think Alice answered this completely, but I definitely recommend washing your hair every other day at the most. If you wash your hair every day, you're actually stripping it of all of its oils, which makes your hair produce even more oil to overcompensate. And if you over shampoo, um, it releases again more of that oil. But how should you wash your hair is also important. You should only scrub at the base, so shampoo should only go underneath here and on the top scalp here and really be massaged and lathered in there and maybe again just down to about an inch or two should be focused on shampoo application now when you rinse it out with warm or cold water preferably cold water the suds soap will run over the rest of the hair and help cleanse anything else now the only exception to washing your hair uh, more frequently would be if it gets dirty. Are there any special products you recommend looking into? So a really important step to anyone's routine should definitely be some sort of a protectant spray or an oil. Uh, I am blonde right now and one thing that really helps with my ends is applying a little bit of a oil over it after washing. Just towards the tips, just lather it on again, just a little bit, smooth it in and it makes my hair feel really strong and healthy, and it also gives it a good shine. I think that the biggest piece of advice that I have for any trans woman trying to grow out her hair is to just be patient. I know it's hard, 
but your hair will grow. I have so many friends in the community that's hair is down past their boobs and it's beautiful and I wish I could have it, but I have to remind myself that my hair journey and their hair journey are two completely different ones. Next week, I will be showing you all how I use clip-in extensions. I hope this inspires you and I hope you learn something new. And until next time, you guys, be safe and I'll see you on the next one. Bye, guys.